Here's episode 2 of speedrunning getting marker switch. It's not actually a speedrun, but the essence is we will find out how far I can get in Borderlands 2 before it becomes unsustainable to feed this ungodly ammo hungry piece of weaponry. The starting section with clearing Lyrisburg and stuff was much much easier, cause this time my ammo capacity was close to 2000 compared to 280. Oh shit! Oh shit! My greed for XP brought my first death upon me. Should have went for the refill. During Roland's initiation mission a rather uncomfortable scene unfolded. After I let Reese know I was there to help him, I had to leave him to the bandits again because I had to go and scavenge a few bullets. What I found wasn't enough so I had to watch them bandits go back to beating him up for a second time. And go. I was welcomed into sanctuary regardless and I chose to do the assassin mission because I wanted to see how it compared in difficulty to the first playthrough. It was harder, but to be fair, the level difference between the enemies there and myself was also less in my favor than last time. Oh shit, lost my gun. Lost my gun. Killing Oney took longer than killing Handsome Jack. That was quite insane, I thought. I'd like to see this guy fight Handsome Jack actually. I think Oni would win. I think many normal enemies would win. Skags, Battle Slaughters. Yeah, Handsome Jack would have no chance against a rabbit Skag or Stalker. Overall, it was a really fun and action packed gaming session that day. I had yet to run out of ammo and money completely. It would happen, but not in Southpaw's Demon Power. There's. There's Slapper! Yes! That's my. chance. Yes! Yes! Got him! Whew! In Frostburn Canyon I found myself a fighting buddy once again. Well done. Next. But his adrenaline rush got way out of control. He avenged my betrayal on his predecessor and then he jumped off the edge of the world in his ecstasy as he got consumed by the sparkly patterns before the remains of his eyes. What a lucky guy. Stagger him please. Thanks. Good teamwork Lilith. Okay, for once you actually deserve it. Lilith saved it was time to get Roland out of his miserable situation. Step one of which, hunting vehicles on foot. Yo. There we go. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh. What the hell was that? Ooh. But he's standing there very nicely. Nice. And I have to get away pretty much. Because I can't kill this guy. Nope. Oh hell no. Finally the one thing happened that I was dreading since the very start of this challenge. And I'm broke, right? I'm broke! And I don't even have something to sell. But I can kill one more car I believe. Yep. Cool. Cool. He's dead. He's down. Yes. Before continuing with convincing Batmore to let me in, I first had to make a little bit of money so I could at least afford one or two ammo refills. Guys, I just want to kill bad more. And what I'm doing is I'm farming Savage Lee and the stupid chest because I can't afford the ammo to kill bad more. Nothing! Crap. Like, I don't have to be here, I just need money. Okay, they're useless. Nice, I can sell them. As I faced bad more, I thought I could not do it in one go. I expected to flee mid fight and go and enrich Marcus a tiny bit more. But I already convinced him on the first meeting, so that was neat. A. Not again. 560 bullets? Easy. But that's okay. Because, give me another 560 bullets. I didn't expect dying to become a strategy, but it's a strategy now. That was 9 deaths in Bloodshot Stronghold. Entering Bloodshot Ramparts, I told myself, I, I haven't died yet, maybe I can make it without dying. I knew from the first playthrough that fighting loaders would be much easier than fighting bandits. I made it to the constructor with zero deaths in the ramparts and I demolished the warden before it could even construct a single loader. But then... Okay. Roland! I died in the ramparts to the very last enemy in the whole area because Roland stole my second wind. 
I hope he dies at some point in the story. Before I went on through Tundra Express, I farmed Bowl for levels. I was also hoping to get a legendary from him as a financial boost, but I didn't. But that's okay, because I was not broke when I was done. I spontaneously decided to help Tina with her tea party. I figured since there's one of Marcus's vendors right behind the generator I would have to protect, that should go well. I freed and collected all the guests, only Flash Sticks neighborhood gave me a hard time. But as Tina requested me to... Oh shit! Can't do that. I then left the party with no comment, just asking myself who this girl must have grown up with to turn out this way. No way! I've never opened this one, I've never seen this one. Last time I destroyed Wilhelm with ease, but this time... I don't have enough ammo. That's enough, right? Oh shit, oh no, oh no, uh, don't tell me I died to Wilhelm. He's dead. He's dead, right? Right? Oh no, not again, not again. Not... Oh my goodness. Cringe, guys. Cringe. Obviously, I defeated him eventually. We could actually skip the fridge, couldn't we? In the second playthrough, you can skip the fridge. If the outwash is not available on fast travel, then you can just save and quit and check again. And there we go. The outwash. Boom. 800? Nah. I knew that the price of ammo was based on the level of the area the vendor was located in. That's why I traveled to Three Horns Divide to stock up on health and chopper fuel for cheap, whenever the possibility was there. I failed to kill the gluttonous thrasher on the first go, so I retreated to the usual safe spot. But there I was too far away to hit consistently, therefore I had to innovate on this most well established fighting strategy. Did I just find the best safe spot ever? Defending the beacon in Overlook was considerably more difficult than in normal War Hunter mode. I ended up repairing the beacon 8 times. At least I had been able to feed my chopper all the way to the end and I survived this fight. Oh no, don't tell me I'm... Oh my god, I die on the last loader. Upon respawning I was notified I had apparently spent all my money. This time though, fortunately I had a full inventory of junk that I could sell. Wildlife preservation was on level 42 and I was on level 39. To fix this level problem I started the clan wars. Guys, do you know the shortcut? I love flipping my car in the dust, get used to it. Yo, what the hell was that? That's a floating sign. If they drive around this, I don't know what this game even is. Happily, I emptied the Zephyrd's cash stash, but I could not take revenge in the name of the Zephyrd's because they wanted me to use a fire weapon and my chopper wasn't one. So I aborted the clan wars and went to the fridge to complete all the side missions there and thus make up for the skip I did. That meant killing Laney there, Shorty and Smashhead. He's walking back. Oh no. Oh no, okay, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Am I? Whew. Okay. Don't pick up my freaking gun. I dare you pick up my chopper. Honestly, what do I do when I pick up my chopper? Is the run over? <laughs> I have no idea. It's still there. Okay, we don't have to worry about it. Okay, I have to hope someone comes close, like this guy, and I have to run. Yo! The aggro. The aggro! Oh, please, no. I'm dead. Mm. And refill. Having gained an extra level in preparation for the preserve, I still didn't bother with those twitchy stalkers. I had to make sure to progress swiftly so I would not find myself trapped on my route to the nearest ammo vendor between the enemies in front of me and those respawning behind me. Ooh, there's our legendary, Pitchfork. That's actually very cool. I can get the big guy, right? Yes. But now I'm dead. There's a chubby! Ooh! We can get a cracked sash! Loot explosion! What? Nothing? Oh, we got a cracked sash. We got a cracked sash, I called it. I'm still below health, Gate. That's scary. What is he doing there? I was running short on ammo. 
I knew the loaders had started respawning already and if I were to die then and there, it would be difficult to make my way back to Bloodring again without spending half of my freshly bought ammo on loaders. One chance. Come on. Yes! That was a little bit close though, but yes, first try. In Brick's initiation I naturally let the Goliaths have a good time. I was looking for just a little bit of ammo so I could finish off the very last Goliath, but then this happened. I hope we don't kill a loot midget now. I hope we don't. Oh shit. Okay. That's another death. The only way to get out of here is to... is this way, right? Hmm. I think... I think I'll do just what he said. What are they doing? What is the bandit doing? What are they doing? They were helping. Wait, what? I'm broke. Again. With so much stuff in my inventory, that's not a problem. Yet again, I was a little underleveled for the next area, the bunker. So I went collecting some XP in Lynchwood. You can do the side missions there all at once to save time, but I prioritized to play it safe and clear Mad Dog's district safely and strategically before dealing with Jack's Iridium train. It worked. <laughs> By the way, I was constantly in a stressed state. With the chopper I could hardly afford to aim poorly, neither could I afford to go down while I was shooting, or even worse, while I was drop reloading. It happened anyways. I slowly got better though in guessing when exactly I would go down and when to stop handling my chopper. Hello Sheriff, you're dead. I also quickly did Rick's mission in Thousand Cuts. This Goliath is actually helping a lot. That's insane. Get this kill. Was that it? Damn, that was just as easy as in the first playthrough, that's insane. If living bandits again, the Goliath died for some reason. The way up to the bunker was quite easy, just like fighting the bunker itself, as it falls under the category large immobile targets, which is the chopper's specialty. In episode 1 I spent 25 minutes in Control Core Angel, not 53, I am sorry guys. I was able to catch some of Roland's turrets ammo region orbs and this time my ammo problems were not nearly as severe. In South of Cauldron the nomads had a big brain move up their sleeves. They camped the ammo vendor so I couldn't do anything. I literally couldn't do anything there so I ran all the way to the entrance of the map to restock on ammo. As I came back I was pleasantly surprised to not be greeted with a rocketeer assault rifle again. They must have mistaken me for a midget the first time. Ooh, good I stopped shooting. I'm dead. Copters generally were no problem in this challenge. This second pump station is where I had a hard time last time. Not this time though, as you can see. Instead, the third one was a struggle. I think it just comes down to what guns the enemies spawn with. You're gonna kill my car. My car's dead. I'm dead. That's it, right? Oh, I got it! <laughs> oh crap. Oh shit. Like this, come on, boom, and now I teleport forward, yeah. I attempted to go in and out of the badlands without deaths, which went well at first. I got a little bit lucky with Saturn and after one refill I ended this fight in full control over the situation. Down me. I destroyed the baddest constructor with my very last shot. But in the next moment my luck ran out. I was getting frustrated at that point because my rate of success in the can I survive a certain area challenge was still sitting at zero and I had only one more story mission to change it at. Give me that! Yes! And this is gonna be my second win. That's insane though. I should take that. Because I have more fire rate here. Look at my fire rate. Yo, look at the barrel of acid spinning. My new DPS build truly felt as satisfying as it looks like. The warrior's chest's gonna melt. Isn't there a name for it when you have a turn to the right like this and you turn like this? And go this way. 
they're hostile. It's so easy. Confirmed, it works. Not just one time. For Heroes Pass, I set myself that one challenge again. Let's see if I die this time, I hope not. Oh no, dude. <clears throat> While Brick was around, I let him take the upper hand in combat. I saved my bullets only for the most life-threatening probits. What can I do? That rocket just flew over my head. Nope, I'm out of here. Actually, I will let him down me. Because... Uh, actually, no. Never mind. Whew. He has slug snipers? What the hell? Oh, we have a guy with... A Why are there so many now? I have to kill this guy. I'm short on ammo. But I'm okay. I'm okay. Whoa. He is such an easy kill. Now if I can reload, that is. Oh, come on. No! I'm done with this. Can I make one last wish? Can I please not die to Jack and the Warrior this time? Finally? Come on. Just like the first time. Wow. Jack dropped a decent launcher with a matching relic this time. I'm dead. What is this guy? Yo, that's my savior. If I go down... Oh crap, never mind. And so the farming for ammo began. During this first attempt, I was below health gate 35% of the time I was fighting. Meaning I was vulnerable to be knocked down in a single hit. My healing was limited to the health vials from ammo supply crates as well as those dropped from wrecks and crystalisks, which the warrior kept killing for me. Miraculously, I went into fight for your life only once. Yo, insane. That's not enough! Dang it! Get some ammo. I can kill the warrior. If he downs me, I can kill him. I succeeded on the first attempt, 14 minutes in. Woo, baby! This challenge is not supposed to be a success story though. This is meant to end in a failure. So, let's see how the slaughter domes go and end this video in a proper way. In the creature slaughter, my ammo ran out after having dealt with 5 stacks or so. There was no way to replenish my ammo in the arena, so this one went nowhere. In the Hyperion slaughter, I made it to wave 2, but again, with no ammo crates anywhere to be found, no chance. Fink's bandit slaughter seemed possible to me at the start. There the catch is, the enemy spawns are mostly random in each individual attempt. I was reloading the map for Goliath spawns, so I could conserve ammo by letting them fight for me. I spent hours trying to get good Goliath spawns and barrel spawns. Yes, these were crucial to kill the baddest enemies and make it through without running dry. Annoyingly, I always had to eliminate each wave completely, including the raging Goliath, so the next enemies could spawn. I got close to completing the third and last wave, but after dozens of attempts and many hours spent, I gave up. I think this should be possible though, if you get goliaths in the right waves and slag barrels everywhere and you don't go down a single time while firing and the goliaths aren't killed by a combination of baddest marauders and a single midget rat with a revenant SMG killing my gladiator non-stop. Um, see you in UVHM. Bye.